new pins leader, six NSIC crowns, and the journey to the three-peak begins. Those are your headlines for this installment of the Husky Grappler alongside Jay Hildreth, graduate assistant wrestling coach for your St. Cloud State University wrestling team. I'm John Peterson, bringing you the latest news and notes of your two-time defending NCAA Division II National Championship wrestling team, the St. Cloud State Huskies. The Huskies have a new leader in pins with Austin Gorgon, who got his 63rd pin, I believe, to end his career as the St. Cloud State Husky at Hallenbeck Hall as he pinned Dominic Tudor of the University of Mary a couple weeks ago. That was a great win for Austin, and uh, he's been on fire ever since. Absolutely. He came into this year, you know, um, that was one of his goals is to get this pin record. Actually, his, probably one of his goals was to pin everybody that he wrestled. But um, definitely a, just a good milestone for him. He deserves it. Uh, he wrestles hard every year, every time um, that he steps out on the mat. So I, I'm just proud of him, and I challenged him to get to 70. So um, I hope he just continues it going. Austin Gorgon passed Tad Merritt as the all-time leader in pins as a St. Cloud State Husky. Currently, he is number one in the nation with a ton of pins. He is probably 22-0, and I think he has around... 15 or 16 pins on 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 the season. Currently, he's at I, I believe it's 13 um, Division Two pins. 13 um, Division yeah. Two pins. We're looking for two more um, pins so he can be the most dominant wrestler in Division Two. Along with Austin Gorgon pinning his way into the number one ranking, we've got Brett Velasquez at number one at 125 pounds. Even though he hasn't been a pinning machine, he's been consistent since the drawback in the, the National Duel Tournament in January. Since then, Brett Velasquez has proved that he is one of the top 125-pounders in the nation with a convincing tech fall win over a very tough Josh Jensen of the University of Mary. I thought that was going to be a close match. It, it, it was close last year. This yep. time, 17-0 first period. Yeah, uh, Brett has just continued to get better and better. And... Um, it's not just his skills or his repertoire. It's just his, you know, it's his mindset that really sets Brett out amongst the rest. You know, he has that growth mindset. Everything he does is a learning experience. Um, trying to get better from the good, from the bad, every day in practice. He's looking on things to improve on. Uh, very coachable, and you know, he's just he knows how to win, and this is where he thrives. And um, we're just gonna look for to get better every single match. Since our last Husky grappler, St. Cloud State went on to beat. Minot State University, 42-3, beat a very tough Minnesota State Mankato team on Alumni Day, then went on the next week to defeat University Mary on Senior Day, and then prior to that, went to Upper Iowa, had a tough duel, won in heart attack fashion, 27-12, beating the Peacocks, ending their regular season. And then the following week in Augustana, got their sixth consecutive NSIC crown with over 50 consecutive NSIC match wins. Last time St. Cloud State lost an NSIC duel was on January 27th of 2011 against Augustana. Last time they lost at home, February 14th of 2010. It's been a very long time since the St. Cloud State Huskies have lost a duel here at Hallenbeck Hall and ever lost a duel in the NSIC. And going 8-0 in the NSIC duel competition and ending duels 17-1, it's going to be another year until the Huskies will have their dual streak up on the line. So, St. Cloud State, regular season over, 17-1, 8-0 in the NSIC. Regions are coming up, coming at you here at Moorhead this weekend. Let's go down the line for your St. Cloud State Huskies regional lineup. We talked about Brett Velasquez, the defending NCAA Division II national champion at 125. At 133, we have an All-American in Mike Rowe. Mike Rohn, yeah, we're glad that he's back in the lineup. Um, he's he's trying to kind of get back into the groove of things. Uh, he took the first semester off, um, but he's really just been building. And the great thing about Mike this year is his just intensity and his work ethic in the practice room. You know, he knows what he needs to get done. This is last semester. He knows his back's up against the wall, and he has goals in mind. So he has a goal of being a national champion, and he knows, and the coaches believe, and the team believes in him that he's capable of doing that. And I just want to see him go out there here this next week and just leave it all out on the line. That's all we can ask of him. Um, that's all he's done every day coming to practice is just lets it all out on the line 
And I know great things are going to happen when he really gets his motor going and he starts getting to his attacks and he just leaves everything out on the mat. He's going to come away victorious. The 141 pounds, Matt Nelson has a career ending injury. He will not be the 141 pounder. Before we talk about the region uh, representative for St. Cloud State at 141, Matt Nelson had a great a great career. It's not the way you want to end it coming back for a medical hardship year, but hats off to Matt Nelson. He fought hard through this, his six years. Absolutely. You know, it takes a lot of grit to decide to come back to another six years, especially in college wrestling, especially over the injury prone that he's been throughout his career. And absolutely, um, I know probably as well as any how tough Matt Nelson is. Um, through those five years, um, he, I, I have to thank him for getting me as good as I was, um, just pushing me every day. And just his mentality and his wrestling style really rubs off on the entire room. He was a great leader. Um, he's going to be there again this weekend to help support the guys like he always is. He's always there every day supporting, um, helping everyone out. So it's hats off to him and just how well he's kind of handling this so far. I know it's a heartbreak for him, but um, hats off to just a tremendous man and a tremendous leader. Um, we're very grateful for St. Cloud to have Matt Nelson. Best of luck, Matt, in your future. 141 pound representative for your Huskies is Jared Optidal, a familiar face, bumping up for 133. He's a pinner, and, and he turns everyone on top. You don't want to go underneath against Jared, and now that he's had time to bulk up to get up to one, 141, it's going to be fun to see him. Yeah, it's great for Jared. Um, he's happy. He's happy that um, he gets to eat and enjoy himself and not have to watch his weight. He gets to come in here. And, you know, you can really see how strong he is. Normally he's strong against 33 pounders, but now that he's on pretty much full feed, um, putting in good things into his body, he looks stronger than ever. He almost fills into the weight class almost after two weeks. So, And I just keep telling him that he's the most dangerous guy in the country. Um, he knows that he can pin anyone at any given moment. So we're just looking for him to wrestle in his positions where he's strong and he's comfortable. And best thing about Jared is he has experience under the lights and in the big moments and he that's where he wrestles his best he's um, been tested and true and regionals and um, once he gets through regionals and nationals it's going to be the same thing so we expect great things from Jared and I know he's going to turn it on. There's been an All-American at 149 since I've been here in 2012. Jacob Dalton Horn was a runner-up in 2012. 2013 he had Jay Hildreth and of course he had Jay Hildreth once again for his senior year. Now we have a freshman. That shows the depth of St. Cloud State University in James Plesky as your 149 pounder. Absolutely. James is probably one of the most athletic guys in the country, definitely on our team. His hips um, are unbelievable. He's explosive. He's fast. And, um, you know, he has a different mindset than most freshmen. You know, he's pretty poised, and he just, you know, he's just going to go out there, have fun, and relax, and wrestle. Um, that's probably what's been James's success so far is um, he doesn't care who he's wrestling. It doesn't matter about rankings or names. Um, it, you're all zero, 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 you're zero, zero going against James. So um, I can't wait to see what he has to do. He has a lot to offer and a lot of potential going in here. And like I said with um, Mike Brown, he's just got to go out there and let it fly. He can wrestle for more than seven minutes. And um, when you get into a scramble or anything, he's going to win those positions. So James is going to go out there and let it fly like he always does. That other 149-pound All-American is Larry Bonstead, who is now your 157-pounder for St. Cloud State. All-American Larry Bonstead comes in with a lot of exclamation point moves. He can pin you out of nowhere. He can have you go on the seat of your chair when you're watching the Upper Iowa duel at home, wondering what's going on. And the next thing you know, he pins Zach Bennett in seven minutes. Yep. Larry is the bomber, you know. Um, he's one of the most dangerous wrestlers in the country. Um, alongside Jared. He just does it in a little more high-flying fashion. Um, Larry's just got to remember um, to continue to wrestle in his positions, not not always force things, and I, I talked about him. Wrestle in his positions, and you know those moves are going to start to open up for him, and he's going to continue to do what he does best and throwing people to their back and pinning him. But we just need to make sure that he wrestles in his positions first and not forces everything. And again, Larry's a very strong-minded um, guy. You know, He wants to go out there and compete, and Larry wants to go out there and win. So. Last year he fell a little short with an injury in regionals, so this year look for him, great things for him. Um, he's going to have a strong finish here at the end of the year. Larry is currently number one in the region and fourth in the nation. At 165 pounds, a familiar face coming off his red shirt year, Gabe Fogarty, the three-time NCAA Division II All-American. Gabe Fogarty will be coming in at a familiar weight. It's 165 has been his weight every year he has been here. 
He's had a couple down times during the year, but you and I both know when Gabe Fogey's on, Gabe Fogey's on. Yeah, when Gabe Fogey's on, he's one of the toughest guys in the country. When he's on top, working tilts, working cradles, another dangerous wrestler who can catch you at any time. and uh, it's Probably a move that you've never seen before, but that's Gabe Fogey's style. So, again, we just tell Gabe to go out there, breathe, relax, and wrestle, um, get on top and do what he does best, uh, and just turns guys, he's aggressive, uh, and Gabe... Gabe knows that, and he's starting to look better as season goes on. And if you look back at all Gabe's seasons, you know, he might not have had the best regular season, but once regional time comes on, he turns it on. So I'm excited for Gabe. Um, his last year, uh, go out there and get a, a national title. You know, that's that's what he's trained for. We know his capability, and, you know, I, I, I hope that's what he's going to go do. One of the senior leaders, Clayton Jennison, 108 career wins, surpassing the 100-win milestone earlier this year. It's his last chance, the 174-pound senior captain from Cambridge Isani High School, Cambridge, Minnesota. Blaine Jensen's got a tough weight class at 174, but hey, he wants it this way because he knows he can make a statement this senior year. Yes, he can. Um, we, I know um, Coach and a lot of guys on the team call him Mr. Consistency. That's because every time he comes in here, you're going to get 110%, no matter if he feels good, he's sick, um, something happened outside of school. When he steps in this wrestling room, he gives you everything he's got from beginning to end. And he's normally one of the last people to leave this wrestling room as well. And he's done that over his entire career. So um, Clayton's just going to go out there. And the one thing that Clayton can't do is just he can't hold back. Because when he holds back, he keeps people in those close matches. And that's when you can kind of get in trouble is when you keep those close matches. But Clayton, you know, he can wrestle for 30 minutes if he, yeah. if he, if he has to. Um, and so... I just want to see, make sure that he gets his shots going right on the first period. Get people in scrambles because um, him and Josh Burton, they scramble for almost an entire practice out here. And there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to come out top on almost all of those scrambles. So that's what I want to see Clayton do is just getting into those, getting into his attacks and going out there and just taking it to people. You know, he's the senior. He's the veteran. He knows how to win. He just needs to go take it to it and get the job done. I believe he will. 184-pound Youthman Review. Youthman, starting at 197 this year, decides to cut back down to 84. He's probably really happy about that. And coming up at uh, 97, his freshman year and sophomore, then coming back down to 84 to get an All-American finish last year for the Huskies, and now being back down at a comfortable weight. When he starts out strong, he has to continue to start out strong. Absolutely. Um, he probably has the, one of the best first periods in the country. He's a takedown machine. He can take down anyone in the country, no doubt about it. Um, and we've started to work with him, you know, develop that um, seven-minute match. And I think we've really kind of, in that Augustana match, you know, he took him to the brink of exhaustion, and Youthman was the one who was still going and still pushing the pace. So I think we turned the corner there in that last match where, you know, we did a little bit different with his warm-up, trying to get his mindset in the right position, and I think he's um, ready to peak here um, coming into regionals. And, again, get his motor going right away, um, and if he can keep it going the entire seven minutes, there's no one can beat him in the country. 197 pounds, Vince Dietz, the red shirt sophomore from Homer Glen, Illinois, showing his first regional competition here this upcoming Friday and Saturday for the Huskies. He's been ranked nationally throughout the year, took a little scumble against Augustana, but having a stumble around this time of year is probably going to tell you, like, all right, this, that's, that's the last time. It's my time to shine. i got to get back to why I was a winning machine this whole year. Besides losing to Ben Goodwin, he's only lost twice the whole year to and, a guy um, named Jaden Cox. Jaden Cox yep. and Goodwin. Joe Gomez. Yep. And then Ben Good Goodwin. So three losses. Two coming to guys who are a national runner-up and some guy who won a bronze medal out in Rio last summer. So Vince Dietz yep. has, has got himself in a very good... Uh, he, he has himself in a little bit of a... Tough time right now coming off that loss, but he, if he just gets the cob, cobwebs out, I think he will be fine. Yeah, uh, what a blessing Vince Dietz has come in. You know, we weren't for sure where he was going to be at the beginning of the year, and, man, he is just – one thing about Vince Dietz is he's so strong-minded. When he sets his mind to something, he's going to go get a job – or going to go get it done. And that's what he wanted to do with his 97-pound job. He went out and said, this is my spot. I'm going to prove it all year long. And that's what he's done. He, he knows how to win the close matches. And what Vince does great is he does what he knows best – to perfection, like his cradles, his arm drag. So we just need to continue to develop those, maybe a little bit more um, here in this weekend, a little bit more fakes with them. But 
that's what Vince is going to go do. He's going to go do what he does best, and he's going to succeed at him. And um, I look forward to seeing Vince have a great show this week. Heavyweight, Austin Gorgon, one last chance, sixth place his freshman year, second place his sophomore year, third place last year his junior year, and this year he's been nothing but unstoppable. He's put on some pounds to look like in the beginning of the year he's not the lean Austin Gorgon that, that we saw. Is he going to lose a couple of steps? No, he hasn't lost a step. He still continues to be that aggressive and relentless wrestler, Austin Gorgon. And this guy, just watch out. Yeah. Watch out. Um, I mean, by this point, I don't think anyone in the country really wants to wrestle him. Um, so right now, the biggest enemy for Austin is himself. And again, another just strong-minded senior veteran that knows what it takes to win a national title, and that's what he's going to go do this 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 weekend and next weekend. He's going to go out there and he's going to rip your leg off and turn you to your back and pin you. To him, it is a, it's almost like a fight out there. He's intense. He's aggressive within the rules of wrestling. But you know what? You're going to have to do more than what's in your power to stop him. And, it, you know, he's just, how much can you say about the guy? He's just unbelievable, fun to watch, and I can't wait to, to go see what he gets done and he goes and take care of his dream. Uh, I'm so excited for him. Overall, do you think the team is at their peak right now? I think we're ready to peak. I feel like we've had a little, we came up top right there at the National Duels. We had like a semi-peak. And then the NSIC conference, we kind of went up and down some hills and valleys. But that Augustana match, I mean, we saw guys wrestling for seven minutes and putting complete matches together, you know, wrestling good on their feet, wrestling good on bottom, and wrestling t tough on top. And even this year, or this week in practice, we've looked fresh, we've looked intense. Not just the 10 guys in the on the regional team, but everyone as a group collectively. So like Steve said this week, I think this is the most prepared team. So I, I, we're ready to peak ready to go get the job done we know what it takes we know what we need to do so it's just up to them to go out there and perform on the mat that's all we ask put it out there for seven minutes trust in your training and good things will happen for the huskies day number two of the super region three championships at moorhead minnesota and alex nemzik gymnasium at uh, the university of minnesota state moorhead will be on the kbsc sports stream alongside brad hildreth and myself, we will have day number two. Day number one, I'll try to do as many updates as possible, but the broadcast will start on day number two. So Super Region 3 Championships, it's the road to the three-peat for your St. Cloud State Huskies. you got to get through a lot of tough teams, but if you've noticed the last couple of years, this is just the beginning of another great year for the Huskies. Alongside Jay Hildreth, I'm John Peterson. We'll let you know how the regions go, and hopefully have a lot of good news going into Birmingham.